Now, this week, the Turnbull government finally confirmed that they oppose Labor's proposed changes to negative gearing, which now makes this issue a major election battleground, and that's something we should talk about. All right, let's get this out of the way, the obligatory explanation of what negative gearing is. It works like this. Let's say an investor borrows money to buy a home and the interest on that loan is $20,000 a year. And let's say when they rent out the property, they only make $10,000. Well, negative gearing lets the investor take that $10,000 loss off their income for the year. So if they earn $80,000 a year, they only pay tax as if they earned $70,000. Right. That's the last time I'm going to explain negative gearing because it doesn't actually matter what negative gearing is, what matters is what it does. And economists agree that negative gearing pushes house prices up, contributes to making our houses some of the most expensive in the world, and if you're from generation X or Y or you're a millennial, it's one of the reasons you can't afford a house. Put simply, they're being outbid by people who want to rent to them. Depressed yet? Well, here's some good news. Labor have proposed limiting negative gearing so it can only be used on new properties. And they've also proposed increasing capital gains tax, which is the tax that you have to pay when you sell an investment property. So basically, they want to make houses less of an investment option for the rich and more of, like, you know, a home. In this country at the moment, we spend more money on taxpayer subsidies on negative gearing than we do on higher education. But this week, our PM, Malcolm Turnbull, threw a baby into the works. On Sunday, he held a press conference to confirm that if re-elected, the coalition wouldn't touch negative gearing or capital gains tax because... Labor's reckless changes will reduce property values. They'll devalue every home, every property in Australia. And they'll result in increased rents because they'll reduce the number of rental properties available. And while the PM said this, behind him were the Minyaka family, who, as the PM pointed out, were using negative gearing to buy a place for their one-year-old daughter, Addison. So to recap, negative gearing has contributed to you, generations X, Y and millennials, not being able to buy a home, but it's got this baby one. So it all evens out, yeah? It was a disaster. Someone who negatively gears to buy a property for their one-year-old child, if things are really that bad, that that's what you need to do to get into the housing market, it says a lot more about the market than that negative gearing is a good idea. Now, defenders of negative gearing point out that people of all walks of life use the tax avoidance measure to get ahead. But consider this. This is a list of the 10 electorates that use negative gearing to claim the highest average losses. Up the top there is Wentworth, the Prime Minister's own electorate. Last night, the Prime Minister appeared on ABC's 7.30 program and was asked to provide modelling that would support his claims that Labor's proposed changes would be a disaster. On the weekend, you said that Labor's negative gearing and capital gains policies would take a sledgehammer to property prices. Where's your modelling for that? Well, it is per well there has been mod modelling published earlier in the... Well, actually, it was given to the Labor Party last year, in fact, by... Uh, uh, BIS shrapnel. Actually, that report wasn't modelled on Labor's policy. It's since been described as manifestly ridiculous by the Grattan Institute, and BIS shrapnel won't tell us who commissioned the report. So Lee Sales asked again for the government's modelling. I asked you if you could give me the modelling for your assessment that it would take a sledgehammer to property prices, and you said it's a matter of common sense. So is what you're saying to voters, I don't actually have hard evidence here, it's my common sense, and so you have to trust my analysis on this? Well, Lee, you know, that your viewers tonight understand the laws of supply and demand. You know what? I'll save you some time, because he didn't have modelling on Labor's policy. But we do. Modelling by the Australian National University's Centre for Social Research and Methods found that Labor's policy would slow the growth of house prices, increase new construction, raise billions each year for the budget, and it literally said Labor's policy could be, quote, the biggest housing affordability policy this country has seen. And no political party or organisation or individual commissioned that modelling. If you're going to run a scare campaign, the idea that your house price is going to get smashed is a pretty good one. And you know what? If looking into the future with modelling isn't your thing, let's do one better. Let's look at actual data from the past. Your grandparents and parents will tell you that it's always been hard to buy a house. And you know what? They're right. But the thing is, it's never been this hard. Let's go time travelling. It's 1960. An average house cost your grandparents 1.6 times their household income. In 1985, it cost your parents 2.25 times their household income. Now, look what happens when we hit 1999. 
boom! That was when John Howard introduced the capital gains tax discount, which increased the benefits of negative gearing and led to a sharp rise in investor activity and house prices. And right now, when you want to buy your first home, the cost of the average house is roughly 4.3 times household income, which is amazing when you consider so many more houses now have two incomes. So good luck if you're single. Now, basically, Bill Shorten is the equivalent of the complaining neighbour who calls the cops and says the music's too loud. Like he's poking his head over the fence and saying, the party has to stop, and it's not just because he prefers Neil Diamond. He's saying things have got out of control, and he's trying to sell us a conservative message, really. Moderation and tax reform and really boring things like that, which is a problem, because I'll be honest, if Bill Shorten was my local car salesman, I'd probably buy a boat. And that's a big call because brown people on boats aren't particularly liked in this country. All I'm saying is a bill saying shut the party down. And we all know that no real Aussie likes a party pooper. That is, until you realise that unless you're a baby boomer, or apparently an actual baby, you're not invited to this party. For the last 17 years, investors have been partying like it's 1999. But it's time we shut this party down.